What's up, guys? So you got to see uh, my Benedictus Anduin Hemet Priest, right, in the last video. Um, so now we're going to go try uh, Jade Druid. Um, I made a... I hit Legend with Jade Druid uh, in August, right? But I played a build that's slightly different from this, and I'm going to just explain the changes uh, real quick. Um, in, in August, I played Kun instead of Medi, and I played Naturalize instead of Mind Control Tech, okay? So this is the list here. It's the same as my deck tech, the one that says 92% win rate, which you can check right here at the top. Um, but I've just only made two card changes, right? So Mind Control Tech and Medi for Kun the Forgotten Conqueror and Naturalize. And the reason why I made those texts is because um, I feel like aggressive decks, I feel like the meta is just wider and naturalized. It's not good against aggressive decks. And I think uh, Kun is just too slow. Um, I think Medivh is a, a stronger threat, comes out on turn 8. Um, yeah, and then my control tech is just very versatile as well. So. That's, that's why I went with what I went with. Uh, and I'll show you, we're just going to play it out, and I'll show you some things with the mulligan. Um, yeah. Alright, so typically, against every deck, you want to mulligan very hard, okay, to try to get your rank. So that includes Wild Growth, Innervate, uh, Jade Blossom, right? Everything else is situa situationally a key. I would never keep Wrath unless it's maybe Aggro Druid. And even then, that's only if I knew for sure it's aggro druid. Because usually, you want a hard mulligan to try to find a doomsayer, okay? Doomsayer is the best removal, way better than wrath, okay? You want a hard mulligan for that and for your your ramp, because that is what's going to win you the game. Not removing an early game drop, okay? The, the ramp is going to win you the game. Doomsayer is a different kind of thing, because it's a tempo play. You play it, it either saves you 7 damage, or it clears that board and buys you the tempo, right? That's big. So, that is why you, against aggressive decks, you go very hard for Doomsayer and ramp, and against every other deck, you go very hard for ramp, okay? That, that's a strategy, important, important thing about the mulligan, right? Like, ramp is okay. Situationally, it's okay, but it's not the greatest part. Now here's another thing, right? Often you wonder like, when should I use Nourish for ramp? And when should I use Nourish for draw? Typically in most situations now in the game, you want to use Nourish for ramp. Because you want to get the money, uh, the mana closer to ultimate infestation. Now, this is obviously situational. If you have nothing in your hand that is an aggressive or... Uh, is aggressive or a way to build your board, then you don't use it for ramp. You use Nourish for draw, okay? Because you need threats to play. There's no point in having eight mana if you have one card in hand and nothing to do, okay? Now, typically, if you have UI in your hand, then, yes, you're going to get very aggressive and try to play that out. Okay, so here, there's a couple things that happen. I am for sure going to play Doomsayer. Now, the reason for this is because worst-case scenario, is he has the coin, so he buffs this to make this a 5, or he plays the weapon, makes this a 2, and he's threatening 6 damage. And because of that threat, I'm going to go ahead and use the Wrath to remove this extra creature and draw me a card, which accomplishes two things, right? It gets me closer to my other threats in the game, my other ramp cards, removes one of his potential damage on a board, and leaves him with the awkward turn here. Because you know, the best thing he could do is put the Rallying Blade on, and he's not even going to do that, so I'm just going to pass this turn. So, you know, usually Paladins I face are Murloc Paladins. I'm not really sure what our opponent is playing. And a, a big question becomes right here, do I want to play the Mind Control tech on this board that's relatively empty? empty. But for now, since there is no real big pressure, I'm going to go to just pass it. There's a mind control tech with but died a rallying blade. And who knows? There's a chance that, okay, the chance that he goes wide on the board. 
And, uh, yeah, you know, you can get more usage out of something else. Um, here we're going to play this for two reasons, okay? Number one, the taunts on the board force my opponent to want to go wider, okay? Because he cannot deal with the two taunts right now. Um, and secondly, I can save my swipe for a bigger board, and I can play my mind control tech and maybe get value out of that, right? So. Now he might buff this, which is king. He might kings it, right? Oh no, he doesn't. So, it's kind of a mistake on our opponent's part. Actually, I don't know. Maybe it's not a mistake. If he puts a divine... Oh, Poisonous. Poisonous is a good one. Poisonous is a very good one, actually. And this situation's not bad for us. Like, typically, I would want to play the Medivh, but, you know, I don't, kind of, I don't really like that kind of board we're looking at right now, so... There we go. It's not a great clear, but an argument could have been made to clear out one of the two ones, I guess. That's that's pretty big threat, like eh, yeah, that's got me worried. But I'm at 34 life, so I'm not dead yet. And I have ultimate infestation, so I'm always in the game, right? And here you go. I played this out now because I want to use my UI on 10. So there's only reason. There could have been a better line of play, like playing Aya and then Hero Power, but that doesn't affect the board state in any more. This right here puts a lot of pressure because now he's forced to watch out for the 10, right? Big. It's big, it matters. Um, so, yeah, it's 10. Here's a good rule of thumb. If you have 10 mana, you play this card. Sweet. Um... I don't even care here, like at this point in the game. Oh my god. That's fine. I don't need another charge of the game. I got a ten I got a free for ten mana I got a death wing. I drew five cards, I gained five life, I dealt five damage. So, things are looking good. And I gotta clear his threats off the board, because I know he wants to kill this, right? So. It's a big one, it's a big play. See, that's a misplay though from our opponent, right? So now it's a situation where, hey, let's just build golems. Spreading play is a card that you really want to save for when they go really wide or they've spent their kind of targeted removal because spreading play plus doomsayer means you're going to clear the board. Like There are very few situations where your opponent's going to be able to answer that. Right?
Then this is like, you know, everything I've done in the beginning of the play required very little thought. Or the beginning of the game required very little thought. Okay, I just planned the turns out, right? I was at 9 mana, I knew next turn I was going to be at 10, and I knew what I wanted to do at the end. Okay, there was no, like, it was not a secret play, right? I, I'm just playing around the options that my opponent was presenting to me, right? So, keep that in mind. As you play these decks. Okay, so here's a situation where there's a board out there, but my opponent is really, really teasing me with the ability to play a wrap or a, a swipe, right? And look how white he's got on the board. That tells me he really wants to buff something or land it. Maybe he has a Murloc War Leader, right? I don't know. But whatever it is, like, this is swipe territory, right? So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to swipe this, clear the board, and this pretty much is game over, I would think. Um, and we can put pressure on him, right? So. so now, no matter what his game plan is, we threaten at least 15 points of damage, maybe more. Um, so he's going to be feeling it a little bit, right? Like a Tyrion would be your face in the like a, a pretty that's a decent sized play and I expect that to be uh, straw cards so here obviously nurse when you have full mana you obviously use nurse for draw so and we got some nice board games Oh, and he played Repentance, so that's a big tell on what he has on the deck. Let's not, like here we're just going to clear. Okay, I, I'll give him Ashbringer, it doesn't matter, because it just, this has done two things. To so remove that extra charge of the weapon, prevents him from using Redemption as an outlet to buff his stuff. We're good, we're in, we're in a good situation here. But we're in a very good situation. Uh, you know, Nourish really is gonna push some shit for us, right? Let's see draw more. Yeah, sure, we can do this. See, the thing about Jay Druid is against other decks that have a creature based game plan. Once you reach this like critical mass of cards, Winter. you can always save yourself. Like there, I don't care if he buffs this with the kings or whatever, really, because at the end of the day, I can play a spreading plague on the doomsayer, and I can reset this board. If I'm losing, I can just reset the board. So, what is going on? That's a big thing. Okay, uh, like. Right here, there really is no reason not to totally reset this board. Well, actually, never mind. There, there is a reason why not to. And it's...
so my opponent is dead. He's dead. Like, really, I don't think there's a card right here that can save him. Okay. And I've just got too much card advantage. I am over eight cards ahead. That's huge. Even poison doesn't save him. Like, wind fury doesn't save him. There's nothing that saves him. Our opponent is dead. Like he's top decking. I got five cards in my hand. I can reset the board at any time. I can draw five cards. Like, he's done. So, and really, this game was determined in the first 10 turns, right? And to be fair, I didn't do anything. All I did was. Yeah. I didn't do anything. And he can't even ignore this board. He has to kill everything on the board. So. This is a really sucky situation for him. Uh, well, I mean, he's dead, right? So, and guys, I like to stress that if you are angry at your opponent and you want to win the game, always end it with ultimate infestation because there's just he can't concede. He has to watch the thing play out, right? So, but there you go. That's the death. Right, J. Drew is pretty strong. I mean, but you can see, like, really, there wasn't uh, many difficult decisions I had to make. It was just planning on my turns, mulliganing well, right? So I hope you keep that in mind. If you have your own replays that you want me to take a look at, uh, if they're on HS replays or if you have video of your, your games, uh, go ahead and put them in the comments. Link me them or message me. Follow me on my Twitter. Follow me there on my Twitter, uh, give me that info, and, and yeah, I'll help you out, or we can t discuss, maybe there's uh, some things that you can help me with, right? But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, of course, subscribe, follow, check my other videos, we're going to continue to post a lot of content, appreciate it.